Hey everybody, I wanted to make this quick short video so you might hear like there's a TV on in the background and you might hear like dog nails clickety clacking around and stuff like that. But I wanted to make this video because I had a, a younger musician friend reach out to me and he sent me a video um, and he just said like, hey dude, uh, check this out. I, I want to know your opinions on it. The video is by Adam Neely, um, who is a pretty well known like YouTube kind of content creator in the musician world i especially among bass players maybe i i think you would be hard pressed to be like a, a, a like a current day bass player and not know who adam neely is because a lot of his videos get circulated around and um this video is actually has very little to do with him um because you know it just does i i think that in general i think that adam neely's videos are great overall uh i think that he is obviously a musician who's thought things through really well and so he does a really great job of explaining things in an educational way and um and he uses like uh, he uses a lot of words that uh to describe things that like learned musicians would would really latch on to a lot of like you know words that people use in school a lot and and you know i'm a musician who went to school too so you know, there's a lot of the things that the way he phrases things and the words he used to describe things like i understand because i went to school and those are the same words that teachers use to teach me things so uh no i think i think adam neely does a great job at what, at what he's doing and and obviously like you know if you've never heard of him go check him out he, he has a band the music's really cool um if you like fusion if you like kind of like not not jazz um, then it's gonna be right up your alley. Um, it's very cool stuff. Um, so anyway, so my friend sent me this video and I'm gonna read the name the title of the video so I don't screw it up. Uh, it's called Learning to Like Contemporary Christian Music, parenthesis, the music that I hate. I think, I think that for anybody who walks around, any musician who walks around um, and says like, they don't like CCM or just church music in general, like honestly, I get it. Um, you know, I, was play, have been playing in church since I was like 15 and have kind of like gone the whole, the whole, like the, the full, full circle, you know, I've kind of like gone through all the motions, you know what I mean? Like, and I still do that now. It's like, sometimes I go like, yeah, church music's really nice. And I have all these things, you know, this giant list of things that I can appreciate about it. Um, especially because I play in a lot of different kinds of churches. I don't just play in CCM churches. And, and also there are sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm like, blow, this music blows, like, <laughs> I'm so tired of it. I don't want to listen to it anymore. But one thing that, you know, at least for a while, I went through those motions pretty, you know, I would have kind of ups and downs and those whatever. But now I've kind of like evened out. And and I think this, there's this one kind of like ideal that helped, helped me, you know, kind of even out, I think. And it's what I really want to talk about. Um, I think that a lot of people who shit on Christian music uh, or just church music in general, you know, one of the things they, they, they constantly talk about, like how boring it is. They talk about that. It like doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, you know, like whatever. And it's like, I get that. But I think the thing that people are constantly not taking into account is that church music is functional music. It is not. It's functional music first. It's artistic music second, sometimes third. I don't know what's second, but sometimes, you know, that's not artistic music. Whatever second is not artistic music either in church music world. Um, and so to, to just jump in on church music with an ext with, with just through the lens of like music artistry, you're always going to be left wanting more. The other, the other like music that's like that, that I like a lot is dance music just straight up dance music you know um take like the song like get lucky or, or daft punk a lot of daft punk's music in general although they're a pretty artistic band just in general um even a lot of their early stuff um which is arguably like more dancey take a song like get lucky right like i love that song uh have always liked it since i heard it but i grew up listening to electronic music and so it like scratches that itch and i also like dance music a lot just in general um, so for me, it was like a home run, right? But I would completely understand somebody listening to that song and then being like, wow, this blows. Like, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. The chords are like the same the entire time. Uh, you know, maybe the rhythms are cool, but maybe you don't like, you know, maybe, you know, or I like the solo, but I don't like the rest of the song. I think all of those things are completely appropriate um, when thinking about that song. Um, but it's the same thing. You have to realize that, that 
that dance music is functional music first. It has a purpose, right? I think I think a lot of functional music, the purpose is is merely it's just to transport the listener uh, to a place where they where it is easier for them to engage in like a certain train of thought or or to be in a certain space mentally easier right and and i think um questlove uh, one of questlove's books wait does he have more than one book i don't know if he has more than one book there's a book that he wrote where he says something very similar he talks about the difference between his professional taste as opposed to his like normal taste or his artistic taste um and i think he uses the song gangnam style uh as like as like his example and he was saying that like you know he doesn't like that song but there's no denying the fact that when he turns it on in a club during like a dj set the the, you know, the effect that it has on the people in the club like it, there's a certain gratification in that and and i you know any musician who plays like just like normal live gigs like will totally understand uh i can't tell you how many times i've been i've been doing like a three hour set in some bar in some town that i've never been to and we're like we're just playing covers we're just playing dance music and it's not necessarily music that i particularly like but because people are having a reaction to it and it's like engaging their minds and engaging their like spirits in a certain way i like it right and i think that's okay that i like it for that reason and i think um and i think Part of it is a, a lot of the reasons why people don't like church music are because they they don't partake in, in the functional side of the music. And this actually has nothing to do about like theology or, or like spiritual like beliefs or anything like that. Uh, but I think that, you know, I've played so many church services where immediately, you know, we'll play a service and then we'll walk off stage. And then the first thing out of somebody's mouth is like, but I hate that song. Blah, blah, blah. And it gets on my nerves, one, because, you know, because at one, there's like, there's no point. Like, first of all, who cares, <laughs> right? Like you already played the song, the damage is done. So what you think about the song doesn't matter now. It mattered beforehand. You know, if like, if you didn't want to play the song, that was your chance. Um, but you know, I know, I know, I know. When most people, when they're just playing church gigs, like it's just a gig. I totally get that. Um, but I, I just, you know, I think you are not giving yourself a chance to appreciate uh, music that has a function if you're only looking at it through an artistic lens. Um, and church music kind of gets that bad rap a lot. In the same way, like you know, there's tons of like meditative music. I doubt, I doubt anybody would sit around and listen to meditative music and be like you know like stuff that has a lot of drones and maybe there's a lot of kind of like fleeting sounds and fleeting noises in the music um and it i you know it would be funny for somebody to listen to that and be like it's cool but i'm bored after the first 20 seconds <laughs> you know it's like something like something like that because uh because meditation in general is something that's generally respected uh among you know most of like my peers nowadays um and so it would be funny for somebody to like crap on that music for the same thing um so that's the first thing and and i think to adam neely's credit like they i think the deal was like they were on a tour and they listened to the music like all way. they all they did was listen to ccm for like an entire week which holy moly i don't wish that on anybody um and i like ccm <laughs> um but i doubt i could do that with many types of music or many artists in general um but the cool thing was i think i think they came to this understanding or at least in the video, Adam comes to this understanding of like, and he talks about, there's like this whole, you know, this book that he mentions um, where they, they talk about like musicking, the act of musicking. And it's like how, you know, without even attempting to explain it, he did a much better job explaining it than I'm about to. So go check out that video, uh, link in the description. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the act of musicking is like participating in the music in a certain way and so you know when you take that into account it, it kind of lets you enjoy music in a different way and so it's cool that he came to that conclusion you know through that thought process and and things like that like that's very cool because i think at, at its heart like that that is that is the way to truly appreciate church music because it's functional music is to appreciate it not just by itself but itself plus its function right um because like that's like you know that's like judging like a, a dish only based on one ingredient right that's like that's like eating a hot dog and being like well i don't really like this ketchup so i don't like this hot dog it's like well that's not really how it works dude it's like the whole the whole deal the second part 
I think my dogs just broke out of their crates. It's fine, I'm sure. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> the second part about it is, while I do appreciate what Adam does, and, what, and I appreciate what people like, people like him do in general, which is, you know, they make educational videos where they have thought these, the, the subject matter of the video, they've thought it through really well, and they've kind of like, you know, kind of done more digging than maybe the average viewer has. You know, like Rick Beato is, is another guy like this too. Super well respected, obviously an incredible musician, like same as Adam Neely. Um, puts out videos of like a similar uh, genre, right? I think one of one negative side of looking at music in that way is if you're only attempting to break down like a piece of music or a piece of art, you know, just in terms of like, uh, my dogs are in the room, so everybody be cool, okay? If you're only attempting to understand a piece of music, whether it's functional, whether it's mainly functional or mainly artistic, um, only in terms of like, of like, like educational, uh, you know, train of thought, right? Or, or not even educational, but like, um, like the train of thought, you know, where you're attempting to understand every single ingredient you know, and you're, t you're attempting to identify every ingredient and, and find every ingredient's merit. Sometimes I think it's easy to miss what makes what, you know, whatever it is, like what makes it great as a whole. Um, and I think, a and I think a good example of this is like blues, um, because blues is one of those things where it's like the first thing that every musician learns, but it's the last thing that most musicians like kind of master. Um, you know, you learn it at the beginning because the barrier to entry is extremely low, right? Like there's one, you learn like one scale, um, that it's taught to you in most people like high school, um, or like, or like your formative years, it's taught to you then. Um, because it's easy to execute. There's not very many notes. You don't you don't have to think about a lot, and you and then and then immediately you ha you you have a tool that's extremely effective, right? So you get a lot of um, immediate satisfaction. Um, but I think and and I caught myself doing this when I got to college. You know, I used to learn. I would like transcribe and transcribe and transcribe, and I would get to a specific phrase, and I'd be like, and I would just look at the phrase and go like, oh, that's blues. So now I would just take that phrase and like put it in my blues category in my mind. Um, and then when I started getting a lot of like smooth jazz gigs, I guess is the phrase that I, is like the genre that it would be. There was a different kind of blues in there than I was used to. I, I was used to learning like, like bebop blues, you know what I mean? Like blues, you know, that had, you know, Billy's bounce, like things like that. And so I was used to just that language and all of that language being blues. So now I'm learning, you know, now I'm listening to like more like David Sanborn and things like that. Um, like Jeff Lorber and you know those kinds of people and I'm seeing that they have a language that is technically blues but the way that it like kind of ebbs and flows is different you know it, the way that it the way that it like happens is different the rhythms are different like the note choice is a little different and so then what I realized was like shoot I've missed so much music because technically you know, I've missed so much music because technically all of these things are just blues. And that's because I was looking at each ingredient and I was, and you know, I was looking at the ingredients being like note choice, you know, like rhythms, things like that. And I was, and I was just judging the licks and, and putting them in categories based on the, the individual ingredient based on their merit. Right. So instead of like taking the whole thing as a whole and trying to understand like, okay, well, this is the tool, but how is it used? Right. Uh, you know, this is the song, but what is it for? This is the whatever, but what is, you know, like there's a part B that I think gets missed when you attempt to only understand music in the guy, you know, like within the realm of like, kind of like, uh, academic thought and things like that. So, uh, you know, and, and that's what I told my friend who sent me this video. I said, I said, listen, you know, church music, first of all, it's functional, gave him that whole spiel. Second of all, uh, if you only look at something in an academic way your everything is eventually just going to be the same right because there's not that many notes there's a there's a ton of different rhythms um but there's not that many notes and and i think when you but when you if you're to only identify what those are you're going to completely miss this entire world of music that you will benefit from right like when i started playing that smooth jazz stuff my my 
you know, you know, my improvising got better because I understood this language that I, in a new way, that was much more relevant to me um, than like bebop was at the time, and and I and I was you know, I was having more fun with it and things like that, and I would have never got there, and I would have never got there and experienced that growth if I only looked at it at an in an academic way. Now, disclaimer: academic settings while kind of polarizing sometimes are not bad when it comes to music um some of the best experiences i've ever had in music came from academic settings i would have never played with certain people i would have never uh met certain mentors who poured into my life and you know helped me learn not just about music but about uh, you know myself and things like that um i would have never been in those situations if i was just been like well schools for nerds I think that's one thing to consider. I think if your takeaway from my video right now is, oh, uh, you know, schools for nerds, and um, you know, I should I should just play what I feel, you know, and what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and the reasons why and why it works and why it doesn't. No, you should attempt to understand everything you're doing in that way, right? Like, there's no there's no good musician who would sit around and be like, yeah, music theory is stupid. Don't waste your time. There's no good musician that would say that. There's no good musician. Um, you know, whatever. But I think there are tons of good musicians that would say, well, okay, music theory and understanding things in an academic way is not the end all be all of music. Um, that was one of the best things that my main mentor in school ever did for me. I was like a freshman in school and was like, go jazz, jazz saves the world. And all I wanted to do is be a jazz musician. And the first thing he told me, and he is more of a jazz musician than I am. So it's funny that he would tell me this, but he said to me, he said, listen, Jazz is just a piece of the pie. You know that, right? And at the time I was like, yeah, 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 even though I didn't at all. Um, you know, same thing with music theory, same thing with learning things in that way. It's just a piece of the pie, right? Like music theory just gives you the tools. It doesn't give you the music. Academic thought doesn't give you the music. It just gives you the tools to understand the music. So you have to do part B, which is digesting the music as it actually is. You have to do that in 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 order to get the most out of part a which is uh you know i went to school and now i can understand everything in the entire world also you know i just want to go ahead and clarify again uh adam neely rick beato like i don't think that they are musicians who only think about things ac academically <laughs> like that it would be if you've ever heard them play like it's not the case um but I think that they, I think that they do a great job at, at producing that kind of content because not everybody can produce that kind of content because it's hard to produce, um, and it takes a lot of you have to really think it out to like actually do it. There's a ton of people that like to like put up like, hey, here's how you play this song. There's a ton of that online, um, and I don't think that those are that great. But I do think that the videos that Adam Neely and Rick Beato and people like them put out are are awesome and, and I, they would say the same thing that i'm about to say is is it's a piece of the pie you have to take it in stride and you have to use that to your benefit you can't just take that as a whole and be like this is this is my this is the end all be all of my understanding i hope this sheds some light on you know maybe if you're if you're like a church music hater or you're a person who like only likes to think ac academically hopefully maybe this will give you um you know just a little a little like uh, a little hint of like what other people are thinking and also the other side too, if you're a person who never thinks about anything academically when it comes to music, um, I would give that a shot because you could you could stand to gain a lot from it. Or who knows, maybe you do it and you go like, this is garbage, I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. In which case, uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe.